How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. So today we're talking about Yorbit Vivas. Now, you may not know who this is, or maybe you've seen a little glimpse of him during spring training, but he's already had two home runs in two games. And this guy could be something. Uh, someone we acquired this offseason uh, from the Los Angeles Dodgers, and I'll tell you what, he's been climbing their system over the last couple of years, really joined them in 2018, played in AAA in 26 games last season, had a couple ups and downs, was dominant in AA. We'll discuss his numbers there in the minor league system and what we're seeing uh, that really supports an opinion of ours that he could be a long-term option at second base if the Yankees let go of Glaber Torres in free agency next year. Uh, Yorbit Vivas has a really good swing for Yankee Stadium, gets really good launch angle, gets really good stuff. He has solid strikeout percentages. This is a player that has substantial upside, someone that you know we certainly didn't expect to emerge onto the scene the way he has over the last couple of days, but I think it's worthwhile discussing. Again, a long time between now and then. Glaber Torres is our second baseman. We love Glaber, but if the Yankees are going to let him walk, we should know about Yorbit Vivas and why he could be a potential supplement long-term at the position. I think you guys will be interested to hear what we have to say on this prospect. But, Ryan, before we dive into it, how do you do today, my friend? I'm doing excellent. You know, when we get to talk about a guy like Jorbit Vivas, you know, obviously, you know, the attention he's gotten is greater because of the fact he's played so well in spring training. And, you know, Alex, you and I have talked about the importance of not, you know, getting obsessed or overreacting with spring training results because, you know, guys can play really well and then struggle in the regular season. Guys can play poorly and then have a great year. You know, look at a guy like, you know, Osvaldo Cabrera last year was phenomenal in spring training. Uh, you know, Rafael Ortega was good in spring training. Anthony Volpe crushed it in spring training and then had a, you know, not great year at the plate in his rookie year. So, you know, it's really important to understand these things. But, you know, when we, we've been talking about Jordan Vivas and to give you guys context, if you're new to the channel, whatever it may be, you know, this is a guy we've been talking about before before spring training started. This isn't, you know, oh my God, he hit two home runs. Now Yankee fans are going to start talking about him. And we just heard about this guy. Now we, we've been talking about this guy for a while. I, I've been, you know, really interested in, in his profile since the Yankees acquired him. His swing is very interesting because it's such a steep bat path. Again, he swings like a guy who should be striking out 30% of the time. But he only struck out 11.6% of the time. His contact skills are really good. You know, he he takes pride in his contact abilities. He has a swing that should produce a lot of contact in the air. And I know that's something, you know, the Yankees are trying to work on him with. You know, that, he he is somebody the Yankees uh, view very highly. Um, I, I can tell you the organization is very confident in his ability to produce. Uh, they think he's going to be uh, a decent player for them. You know, and, and the thing I really like is I love a prospect who can play great defense and provides base running value because I think it kind of... It prevents them from being a complete zero or a complete black hole for your team when they're struggling at the plate. What made Anthony Volpe, you know, what, to me at least, what, what I really liked about him as a prospect was the base running. And when I thought he'd be a second baseman, I thought he'd be an above average defender there. So in my head, it was he'll give you good defensive value and he'll run the base as well. That should give him good war value or at least playable war value even when he's not hitting. And he didn't hit last year, and he was an average to above average shortstop, depending on whichever version of war you look at. So, you know, I, I, for a guy like Vivas, he's going to play great defense second base. You look at the defensive skills there, they're pretty good. I know that scouts and evaluators haven't always had the best defensive grades on him, but the production at AAA and AA in terms of his defense, according to Baseball Prospectus, and according to Davenport runs, uh, they, they love his defense at second base. So I, I think there's something to like there. Uh, the base running, he had uh, average 28.5 feet per second in AAA, that would have been in the 80th percentile for major league runners. So we see that jump in stolen bases. He stole uh, 25 bases in 30 attempts last year. I think this is a guy who could provide some positive base running value. Is he going to be a 30 base, st uh, 30 stolen base guy? I don't know. His aggression kind of spiked last year. You know, in 2022, he only stole two, two bases in three attempts. So he's never been a great base dealer until now, at least a, ne never been an aggressive one. I imagine that's something that's going to be part of his game going forward. Um, you know, I, I just think this is a guy who could be like a, you know, we're talking like maybe a plus four, plus five defensive run save kind of guy, you know, provides you plus one to plus two base running value. Um, and if the bat is average, right? Like that's a positive, that's a good player. Like that's a, that's a really solid second baseman. I look at what Zip's projections to be. They think he'll put up 2.1 war um, across 132 games if you were to play 132 games. Um, with, and that's with a 94 WRC plus and a 247 average. So, you know, we're talking about a well below average offensive player for their projections this year um, and still being a two war player. 
a two-war player would have been one of the best players in the Yankees last year. So, you know, I, I think we should all kind of understand that defensive base running matters so much. And I know that a lot of this is going to be talking about his offense, and we'll, we'll definitely get to that. I imagine Alex are going to start talking about his offense a little bit. But I do want to preface this by saying a lot of what I really like about Vivas is that the other skills are there, and it's just a matter of how good he'll be as a player is determined by how good his bat will be. And if the bat's good, he'll be, he might be a great player. If the bat's great, He'll be a phenomenal player, and he just has so many unique skills because of his swing path, so I just really love the profile here, and I think he could be an exciting player in the Bronx. Yeah, you know, I, I, looking at the projections for Yorbit Vivas, I don't really see why they're so low on him, uh, to be quite honest with you. They're, they're exceptionally low, some of these metrics, and uh, I'll tell you why. Well, every single you know level of the minor league system, aside from that small 26-game sample size in AAA last year, were excellent. In AA last year, he played 109 games, 12 homers, 54 RBI, stole 21 bases, hit 280 with a 391 OBP and a 436 slugging with a 123 WRC plus, a 10.6% strikeout rate and 11% walk rate. He was excellent. And before then, he had 269 with a 374 OBP in high A um, in 2022 and in 2021, hit 318 with a 422 OBP, 139 WRC plus. This guy has been an above average, well above average hitter at every minor league level. Level. So why is it that they're projecting him to be such a lower, uh, you know, production guy at AAA if every single level has been exceptional so far? I think that right now, 22 years old, he's probably going to start in AAA. He's adjusted to every single level quite nicely. And, and for what it's worth, his numbers in, in AAA, let's talk about those for a second. He hit 225 with a 339 OBP. Keep in mind, again, you know, Spencer Jones struggled in AA and high A last year. You never know how a guy's going to translate. He's been hitting off major league level pitching this spring training, playing with some of the top guys and shining above the rest. So, you know, aside from like Juan Soto and some of those other guys, but he's been excellent. Um, you know, had a 12.4% uh, walk rate, which is the second highest in his career uh, when he was at AAA. Obviously, he didn't do much in terms of only one homer, nine RBIs, uh, but he had four stolen bases in 26 games. He can steal bags. I'd like to see the Yankees get him a little bit more involved there, as you kind of referenced. Um, only hit 294 with a slugging rate. I think his launch angle is solid. I think that his hit tool is solid. I think he has good patience, good plate discipline. I don't know why the projections are so low. But like you mentioned, he has a really pretty swing. If you saw that home run yesterday, absolute moonshot. Just snuck over the field, uh, the outfield fence. But um, you said it today in yesterday's episode too. Yorbit Vivas has a really good swing for Yankee Stadium. And he's a lefty. So ultimately, talking about his defense at second base, talking about him as a second baseman, he's a preferable option for the Yankees in the infield. If you want to replace Gleyber Torres, you want a lefty. Because you're going to get more production out of a lefty. Um, in Yankee Stadium than you are than a righty. That's just traditionally a fact. And Glaber Torres is a very solid player. And he, you know, he, obviously we love Glaber and he has a lot of good traits. You know, hopefully he puts it together offensively and defensively this upcoming season. But if Jorbit Vivas tears up AAA, um, if, if, you know, anyone, if Glaber has to miss any time this upcoming season, would you rather move DJ LeMahieu to second base or call up Jorbit Vivas to play a little bit and see what he's got? You know, I don't think – I'm not really worried about service time right now. He has no accumulation of service time, one minor league option. You see what he has, get him some, uh, some action. Do you think there's a world where we see him get some action in 2024 um, at the MLB level? And if not, you know, what is the probability that the Yankees see him if he, if he dominates AAA, let's say? Do you think he's a realistic – option to replace Glaber long-term at second base. Right now, I think I like everything that he's composed of. I like all of his traits, but now we need to see him actually contribute, actually um, do it consistently, and maybe we can save us a couple of bucks here um, on a cheaper prospect like him. Yeah, so to clarify, I'm pretty sure the projections are just for the major leagues. Like, if you were to play Major League Baseball, not AAA, I'd be stunned if they thought he's, like, not going to at all hit in AAA. Again, I, I understand prospects can't guarantee anything. I I'm not I'm not one of those, like, oh, my God, his, his, you know, his spring training numbers are so good. He's going to be the future second baseman, whatever. But that conversation definitely does come into the fold because, uh, you know, Glenn Torres is an impending free agent, number one. Number two, you know, Vivas isn't some, like, random prospect. This isn't, like, a guy who just showed up to spring training and is like, oh, okay. Uh, he, he's a top 10 prospect of Major League uh, Baseball's uh, pipeline list. Now, I'm not a huge pipeline guy. I'm more of like a prospectus, Baseball America. And they both have him in their top 15 for the Yankee organization. They think this is a good prospect, a guy who can really help the Yankees. Um, and, and again, like I just... 
I, I really, really love that left-handed swing. You know, you and I are talking a lot about Vivas uh, before this podcast, and I had mentioned a guy like Didi Gregorius, where Didi Gregorius might not have been that good of a player uh, if he had gone to a different ballpark, but at Yankee Stadium, it absolutely played. It was it was amazing. His his swing was perfect for Yankee Stadium. Now his his swing's a little flatter than Vivas's, is, um, but. Honestly, I think that Vivas' swing is going to play even better in that regard because there's more loft. And it's interesting. You would kind of expect a guy who has that much loft in his swing to struggle for, to hit for average. He's hit for average. He hit 280 in AA. I know he didn't hit for average in AAA, but he didn't hit much at all in AAA. So I don't know if that's a lack of skill or just a matter of the guy just wasn't hitting very much there. Um, his bat pip has consistently been excellent. Do I think he's going to hit 300? No, but can he hit like 250, 260? And the walks are getting him to around like a 340, 350 OBP if things go well? Absolutely. The question is just how much game power we're going to see. And I think we can see a decent amount of game power in a ballpark like Yankee Stadium. I'm not saying he's going to hit 30 home runs. I'm not saying he's going to hit 25 home runs. But if it hits like 15, 16 home runs over the course of a full season with his OBP skills, you know, that's going to be a good player. We, we really, the target the target WRC plus or OPS plus, whichever version of that metric you prefer, um, you know, is right around that 100 to 105 range. That's probably what would make him a good second baseman. If he gets above 105, pushes closer to 110, we're talking about a 4 to 5 war player. So like that's... That's kind of the the range of results we're looking at here. 100 to 105 will make him an above average, pretty good second baseman. Anything above will make him a, a might might make him a great one. So, uh, you know, I I just I, you mentioned the replacement for Gleyber Torres. I'm not gonna sit here and, and start staking the claim he is the second baseman of the future, but he can be right. And I think those are two different sentences. He is or he will be versus he can be. The potential is certainly there. Whether he realizes it or not, whether he, it comes to fruition or not. We don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. We're just, we're guessing, right? But I think that you and I would agree that out of all the options that they have internally, this is the one that stands out as, I think, the one that fits kind of what the Yankees would like the most. I think there's a reason they got him. You know, the Yankees didn't just acquire Victor Gonzalez for cash. They acquired Victor Gonzalez for a first-round pick in Trey Sweeney. They also got Jorbit Vivas in this deal. Jorbit Vivas is a the guy they wanted. They wanted to have Jorbit Vivas. Look, they could have kept Trey Sweeney. They could have just stuck on to Trey Sweeney, the guy who you know played decent at Double A, had similar WRC plus numbers, did not play in Triple A, but you know had some injuries, stuff of that nature. Good talent, shortstop, so you can imagine he can slide over the second or third. They traded that away for a guy who's guaranteed to be on their forty man roster, who's gonna op- eat a forty man roster spot. That means that he's going to be a guy they consider to call up this year, and he only has one minor league option remaining. That means he only has one year to be an established major leaguer, or else the Yankees are going to place him on waivers, or they're going to be forced to trade him. This is a guy they have a lot of faith in. This guy's service clock's already started. They really believe in this guy, and I can tell you again, Alex, I I, I can tell you that they really believe. I can tell you they really think this guy's going to be good, and you know, again, looking at the swing, I, just, I look at a guy like Didi Gregorius where it just worked because of the ballpark. I think we're looking at a similar situation here, and I'm really excited to see how he plays in the rest of spring training, and, and more importantly, when when, he, when AAA comes around, can he get off to a hot start? Because all it takes, like, you don't want to be in a situation where an injury happens and you're playing poorly on AAA because you won't get the call up. You know, if you're Vivas, you get off to a hot start, you win a job somewhere because of an injury, the Yankees aren't going to pull the plug on you, right? The, the Yankees, look, I know people think the Yankees don't want to play the rookies, but I think if the, if there's a player who comes up and plays well, they're not pulling the plug on that. They're not going to go, oh, well, well DJ's back. He's got to play. They're going to be like, well, Vivas is, is really helping this team. He's going to play, you know? Um, and I think as opportunities open up, Vivas might open himself front and center. You know, it's interesting because we talked about Oswald Peraza and like, you know, what does his situation look like? It didn't take much for Vivas to start, you know, jumping uh, Peraza, at least in the fan, in the eyes of fans. And last year, the Yankees looked a little bit hesitant to call up Peraza. So I wonder how that has an effect on who they go to uh, in a situation where somebody goes down. Yeah, I'll leave you with this, too, uh, from a financial perspective, if you're thinking about extending Juan Soto and that Glaber Torres money makes them feel more comfortable if they let Gleyber Torres walk. They have additional 20 mil per season. If that gives them the the comfort of, you know, we can now guarantee we're bringing back Juan Soto by letting Gleyber Torres leave, and Yorbit Vivas has a good year and they feel as though they can um, utilize him as a cheap alternative, I think they're going to do it. I think if it means if, if Gleyber Torres staying um, or leaving is the difference maker between signing Juan Soto, I think they're going to bring in Soto long term and they're going to, you know, 
put a player like Yorbit Vivas, who's a really, really cheap alternative um, at second base. It could be Oswald Peraza, for all we know. It could be Oswald Cabrera. But if one of those guys emerges and showcases that level of upside, that level of talent, and they feel that that production is going to be there, and they have Aaron Judge and Juan Soto to help cover up any any liabilities early in the season, I, I think they're going to pull the trigger there. I think they're going to let Glaber walk. Um because I think most of you guys would probably assume the same thing. If it comes between Glaber and, so- and Soto, I think we're all going to pick Juan Soto to stay with the Yankees long term. Um, so it-, it could come down to that, realistically. If they want to spend a little bit of money at the pitching market, they want to bring in Juan Soto, and it means walk- letting, Glaber- uh, letting Glaber Torres leave and keeping costs down at second base, I-, I think the writing's on the wall. That's personally my perspective. It could be different. We'll see how things unfold in a year from now. But we'll also keep you guys updated on Yorba Vivas, how he's performing in spring training, and obviously as the regular season unfolds in AAA. Always happy to hear your thoughts below in the YouTube comments section. Make sure to like and subscribe, as always, my friends. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode.